It's 60 degrees in downtown San Francisco, 730, and we continue with KGO Theater 5, two and a half hours of new radio drama for San Francisco. If I live one more day, or if I live to be a hundred, to me the night sky will never be the same again. Somewhere out there where no other man has ever been is the only man who ever chose the world he wanted to live in. I saw his eyes. They were blinded with starlight. But they were brighter than any eyes I ever saw. I heard his voice. It was a whisper. But clearer than any voice I ever heard. I have a message. I have a message for all mankind. And then it broke. But I can't remember. I can't remember what it was. What was the message? He's out there now. Somewhere beyond time. Theater 5 presents Outside Time. Watching this old Betty Grable movie. Watching an old Betty Grable movie? Yeah, on little portable TV. I had it sitting up there in the dashboard. I know. All but of a sudden, this commercial comes on. The guy in a white coat says, Now watch this amazing demonstration. And? I watched. Next thing I knew, pow! Look, you can't watch television commercials while you commute. I found that out. You yeah. can't read a newspaper. No. The only thing you could do while you're driving is listen to the radio. Yeah, well, that's all I intend to do, boy. Just as soon as I get out of traction. No matter if it's summer, winter, spring, or fall Who listens to radio? Only 150 million people That's all <laughs> the record, General, what's your biggest thrill in being in command of the space shot tomorrow? The liftoff, the moment of orbit, what? Well, actually, Colonel, my big moment, my biggest thrill is right now, before the event. How do you mean? Well, tomorrow we're going out a little further than man has ever gone before. Not just further into space, but further into man's experience. Tomorrow I'll be busy in my own small way, behind the scenes. But tonight I can marvel at the endless hours of preparation that make this possible. Why, it's the culmination of all of mankind's ingenuity since he learned to make crude instruments out of stone and control fire and split the atom. I see what you mean, sir. Yes, the real thrill is in the awareness of all the preparation. The feeling of being a part of this marvelous precision. The feeling that we're prepared for even the unexpected. How about you, Captain Durrell? You're making the flight. Well, I guess I feel about the same, like everything's been done that can be done. Tomorrow? Just going along for the ride. All clear. All clear. Control tower now operational. Confirmation to lock in. Primary ground control units confirmed. Secondary control coordinates confirmed. Tertiary coordinates confirmed. Data relay units confirm. Telemeter confirm. Captain Terrell confirm. Confirmed and affirmative, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. All operational units are confirmed. Lock in. Final countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. T minus four, five. Good luck. Three, two, one. Perfect. Execution perfect. Colonel? Primary coordinates correct and exact. General, five seconds to boost it. Open audio. Report. Second booster A OK. Secondary coordinates correct and exact. Report. Third booster A OK. 
Tertiary coordinates correct and exact. Pinpoint. Officer. Captain Terrell, General Pearson speaking. Everything perfect. Pinpoint precision. Report. Thank you, General. Affirmative and operational. Our instruments will be tracking you from here on in. Colonel Winter, Dr. Markson, and Professor Mirdahl are here to handle your reports. Report now to our psychiatrist, Dr. Markson. Captain, describe your sensations and emotions. Moderate exhilaration, general calmness, no functional impairment. Now regarding exhilaration, any dizziness? No, sir. Describe your exhilaration both subjectively and objectively. Subjectively, lightness, pleasure. Objectively, not symptomatic. All well, nonsense about that, young man. Your thoughts? Technical thoughts. And the uh, pleasure of being the center of attraction. He's entitled to that. A feeling of, uh, well, here I am. Approaching high point, sir. You are approaching the outer edge of your orbit. Do you feel strange in any way? No, sir. Reaching point maximum. Tell us your sensations, Captain. Well, sir, at this moment, I feel perfectly. Terrell? Terrell, where are you? He's disappeared. Tracking, tracking. It's off screen, General. That's impossible. Terrell, this is General Pearson. Come in. That's impossible. Is something wrong here? No, General. All ground instruments are operational. Are you sure? Positive, sir. It, it's the capsule. It disappeared. Well, it can't simply disappear. Mirdal, Professor, what could have happened? My needle jumped off the graph, General. There was no explosion. It's simply gone. But it can't be. It can't. Well, it's gone. Simply gone. You mean it vanished into thin air? It would be more correct to say into empty space. Thin air, empty space? Well, it has to be somewhere. Could somebody have a secret weapon, a way to dissolve our capsule in orbit? No. No, not unless they've made some unbelievable advancement. No, impossible. Professor, are you sure this thing couldn't have crashed to Earth? Impossible. It would have been on our tracking all the way down. It never went down. Well, it either went down or it stayed up. Where is the capsule? It must have entered some radiation belt with properties we're unaware of. The intensity of the vibrations was so great that my needle jumped off the graph. A split second later, the capsule was swept out of the universe. Along with Captain Terrell. Well, maybe he'll report he's out there somewhere. Captain Terrell. General Pearson, take it easy. Someone shut off that monstrous clock. Shut off everything. we got to think. Now, well, we're not a bunch of schoolboys. We're not going to panic. We're not going to lose our heads. We're going to proceed in an orderly fashion. I... Good heavens. I... What is it? It's Terrell. Captain Terrell. Uh... Terrell? It... Here, catch him. He's going to fall. Uh... Sit down. Sit down over here. Now, let me help him. Oh, uh... All right. This just can't be. It just can't be. I turn my head and he's here. How is that possible? I was facing the door all the time. It never opened. Check security on that. I, I, oh, wait, wait. He, I, he's trying to speak. I, he, he wants to say something. I, no, no. Uh, take it easy. Take it easy, everyone. I, I, Doctor. Dr. Markson, you take charge there. I, you must have a full medical report. A full medical report. You understand? Captain, I, I want you to try to focus your eyes on my finger. I, 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 Can you do that? I, no. No, what actually happened? Exactly what happened here? I, Colonel? Well, sir, he, he just just appeared in, in the middle of the room. Out of nothing, out of nowhere. His pulse is rapid and his breathing is shallow, but he seems to be all right. Now, we must have maximum security here. Nobody enters or leaves this room. Cut off all communications. Seal off communications until we can make a coherent report. Now, now send out one message. Say that we're in communication with Captain Terrell. Well, that's true, in a way. Uh, uh, wait, wait. Uh, He's still trying to say something. I, so, I, so, I can't uh, understand. His pupils are not dilating properly. I, uh, I don't believe he's able to see. He is blind. I uh, see. Uh, no, he says he can't see. See the, uh, uh, He says he can see everything. I, he's very excited, sir. Hysteria, uh, I suppose. See. We'll have to have a full psychiatric oh. report, too. Can't call anyone in for consultation. At least not yet. We've got to have information security until we know where we stand. He seems to be excited and hysterical, but in Master. some strange way, very calm. Uh, we must handle all of this in an orderly fashion. Our first obligation is to this man's physical well-being. Is he in physical danger, Doctor? I don't think so, General. I have a message. Wait, wait, he's saying, saying something about a message. 
passage to report. Well, a message from where he's been. Uh, he's obviously too upset and disturbed to, to know what he's doing or saying. Say, uh, uh, now, Doctor, I hope you're prepared to make a report on your observation. Yes, sir, but it's all very inconclusive so far. So, uh, Mirdo, what's your theory about this? Theory? I have no theory. This is something that never happened before. Well, we better get a theory. The whole world will be waiting for some kind of an explanation. I have to say... Uh, sir, sir, I, I think sir, he wants to speak to you. I have to... What do you think, Doctor? May I question you? It would be better if he could remain calm. Calm? Who can be calm at a time like this? Uh, Captain Terrell. Uh, Terrell. Uh, uh, Son, I'm your commanding officer. Listen to me. Uh, sir, I ha have a message. Uh, I can see it now. His eyes are staring, but he can't see a thing. Now, don't try to get up, Gilbert. Uh, try to be calm and sit back. Listen. Listen to me. Uh, everything's going to be all right. Listen before it's too late. Listen. First, we have to get this whole thing straightened out. Now, Professor Myrdal, do you have any theories at all? Uh, Captain, how did you get here? And what happened to your craft? The message. The message brought me here. I I have a message for all mankind. Uh, of course, of course. But we've got to know what happened. Now just answer our questions one by one, and everything will be understood in due time. <laughs> Answer our questions one by one, and everything will be understood in due time. You've got to release a report of some I've kind. I've got to tell... Well, I think he's becoming more coherent, sir. I've got to tell you while I can still see... His eyes are becoming clearer, sir. Will you give the message to everyone? As soon as I can make a report, Captain. Now, what was the very first thing that happened to you? Captain? The first thing that happened was that I was suddenly there. Well, you were where? Now, try to answer me. Captain, what were your surroundings? I had no surroundings. Well, where was your ship? I had no ship. You were floating alone in space? I wasn't in space. Well, and where were you? Where was I? I... I was there. Well, while you were there, did you by any chance see what happened to your spacecraft? It seemed very unimportant. Unimportant? Well, did it dissolve or disappear? General, it simply ceased to be, obviously, because there it could not see. Couldn't see? A capsule is a machine, not a life. It can't see it. It has no soul. Soul? Well, oh, I suppose not. Captain, how did this ability to, as you say, see manifest itself? What exactly did you see? I can't tell you everything because I saw everything. I saw everything I thought about my childhood. Lincoln at Gettysburg. The birth of the human race. The whole thing. Past, present, and future. That's where I got the message. Now, when your capsule disappeared, how did you come back? Did you do it by willing it? Willing it? Yes. I could go anywhere, but I came here. I can still go anywhere. Gentlemen, I don't think we should examine this man anymore in his condition. He's obviously emotionally overwrought. Emotionally overwrought? We're all emotionally overwrought. We've got to put together some kind of a story. Yes, but if you encourage him in these fantasies, you may make it impossible for him to return to a normal state of mind. I can't go anywhere, but... But I can't aim here because of the me message... L listen. I can't be responsible if you continue this. Listen. Give him a quick catch him. He's fainting. I've got him. Here, help me with him over to that car. Right. Now he's in a coma. 
What do you think, Doctor? His pulse is still strong. I don't understand it. Well, let him rest here until we see what happens. Maintain maximum security. How is he, Doctor? He's just coming to. His eyesight seems to be normal now. Can I speak to him? Yes, but we'll watch for his reaction. Captain, do you recognize me? Yes, General, sir. That's the doctor and uh, the professor. But how did I get here? How did you get here? That's what we'd like to know. Well, all I know is that something was to happen to me in orbit. I guess I passed out. Then you must have had me brought down. I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't know what happened to me. Can you remember anything after you left orbit? I'm sorry, but I... Must have just passed out. The medics checked me out in good condition. I, I don't know why I'd do a thing like that. Are you saying that you don't remember a thing from the time you passed out in orbit until you came to on this cot? Yeah, well, that's about it, sir. We did not bring you down, Captain. You came down by yourself, without a spaceship. In fact, you didn't come down. You simply materialized in the control tower. You were babbling about having some sort of an urgent message for all mankind. Captain, are you listening? Yes, sir, but I... I, I, I can't remember. He doesn't understand a word we're saying. I, Do you? I, I guess I must have been out of my head. But you've got to remember. Now, try. Really, try. Please, asking the captain to remember this is like trying to force someone to remember a dream. Well, you're a psychiatrist. Can't you get it out of him? I can try. But the process may be lengthy. And there will be no clear proof that what he recalls will be the original fantasy instead of a totally new fantasy. Fantasy, Doctor? I don't believe it was a fantasy. Yes, a message. We've got to get that message. We've lost a message that may mean more than life and death to all mankind. It may be highly irregular, but perhaps we should send another astronaut up right away. That's it. Immediately, under the same conditions. The twin launching pad is operational. We can do it in hours. Get it ready at once, regardless of security. Sir, you can't do that without causing a sensation. Surely you want to clear it with someone. This is no time to worry about orderly procedures. We've got to find out at any cost. I'll take the consequences. If we send up another astronaut, in my opinion, it should be Terrell. Another man might lack some necessary characteristic or element of sensitivity to enter the dimension he was in. Mm. What do you think, Doctor? I really don't know. I, I guess it would be up to him. We don't know if the same thing would happen to any other man. We don't even know for sure it'll happen to him. With my bumbling, I may have destroyed the whole future of mankind. But that's not his fault. No. I can't permit him to go up again. But I'd like to go up again, sir. I've got to go up again. How do you feel, Captain? Affirmative and functional, sir. No element of your memory returning yet? No, sir, nothing. I'm sorry. Well, this time we're better prepared for it. You're about to enter the final phase of your original orbit. Set the automatic cameras. Set, sir. Now remember, from the moment it happens, if it happens, you are to continuously recite aloud all your impressions into the tape recorder on your throat. Even if sounds don't come out, you'll reconstruct your accent from the vibrations. Approaching point maximum, General. All right, start talking now, Captain. And whatever you do, don't stop. Well, sir, right now I feel perfectly... Well, General, it happened. Yes. Yes, it happened. Professor Murdoch. Yes, sir? Do you think he's coming back this time? No, he's not coming back. Then he's lost? Lost? No. Perhaps he returned to there, and he chose not to come back this time. It may be that we waited too long, General. 
Those few hours after he got the message may have been an infinity in the world outside time. It may be that it's just too late for the message, and that perhaps we are the ones who are lost. Presented Outside Time, written by Lawrence Weinberg and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Al Hodge, George Petrie, Jack Grimes, Maurice Tarplin, and Richard Keith. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlas Dotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. <laughs> Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. 